Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Rethink Connectivity. My name's Jeremy, and in this series, I cover topics related to the NATS messaging system. And in this one, we're going to be going over a pretty cool topic, and that's the dynamic permissions model that we have um, with signing keys specifically. So I know in previous episodes, I went over our decentralized AuthN and AuthZ. I went over that whole model, and I showed you how to set it up. Today, I'm going to be talking about a specific feature inside of that model, which is uh, scoped signing keys. So there's going to be a fun one. If you are using NATS and you're um, working with our decentralized Authn and AuthZ, this might be a feature that you don't even know exists, but it's super, super powerful. So let's just dive straight in. Um, if you guys want to follow along, we actually, uh, I'm going to be using NGS, which is, uh, which is Synadia's NATS global super cluster. Um, it's our global deployment of NATS that you could sign up and use for free. We have about uh, you know 72 different uh, NAT servers at play and various geos and clouds and everything like that. It's a really good way to kind of see how NATS can globally be set up and, and it's really affordable and there's all you know as always a free tier. Um, but you can follow along with me just by signing up, going through the onboarding of setting up your NSC environment so you can have an account to play with. Um, and so just go to this URL URL um, or go to synadia.com and sign up for NGS and you can follow along with all of this. Okay, so I'm going to go into my terminal and the first thing we want to do is we're going to be using the NSC tool to be doing a lot of this. And so I'm going to say NSC describe account and I already have my account chosen here. Um, you're going to get some gobbledygook because uh, <laughs> this is a really big table basically. Uh, we're going to ignore that table for a second and we're just going to look up here um, over on our account details. And you can see I've named this one Code Gangsta Chat and we have an account ID that's been issued to us and it's been issued by the Synadia operator here. Um, and then we have some limits and everything like that. This is a typical account, um, what, what, can, what we can use inside of our multi-tenant setup for NATS. So what we're going to do here is we wanna create some users for, for accounts, but we don't wanna just create any type of users with, with limits or anything like that. Instead, we're going to show you how you can uh, essentially create permissions on users um, without having to re-mint those JWTs or remint those credentials. We're going to do that through signing keys. Now, there's a couple different reasons we have signing keys inside of our NAT systems. Um, the first one is that signing keys are just really good security hygiene in general, right? If I have an, a, my root account key here and I do everything with it, if that key gets compromised, uh, I'm kind of out of luck. And so what we recommend is that you do create signing keys to create users. Um, that way, if that signing key gets compromised, your whole system's not compromised, which is great. You can revoke that key, issue another one, and reissue all of your users users. Um, so what we're going to do is we're first going to just create a couple signing keys. Um, NSC edit account and we'll say SK generate like this. We'll generate our first signing key. Great. And we'll add another signing key as well. So we'll just have one signing key just to mint regular users. But the, the second signing key right here, this AB MK is we're going to use that and we're going to edit that signing key to create specific permission scopes, essentially to create like a role-based authorization mechanism inside of our um, inside of our account. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say uh, NSC describe uh, describe account and we'll scroll up here and you can see that our signing keys show up there. That's just plain old signing keys. You could use these to sign users however you'd like. Um, now we're going to edit our second signing key and we're going to give it a role. Now I want to build like a bit of a chat application with this. And so I want to know that there's a chat user and that they have access to a particular maybe chat room or organization or something like that. But I really want to create these permissions around, um, you know, they can post in the chat as themselves and then they could listen in, in the chat from anybody. Um, that way we can kind of have a authenticity to, uh, to know who's actually posting on these subjects. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to say uh, NSC edit, oops, edit signing key. And um, if you go here, um, you can see that we have a lot of 
we have a lot of flags that we could pass in here for a signing key. You can, they basically mirror all of the user permissions. And the reason for this is we have this concept of scoped signing keys, meaning you give it a role and then you can give it a template. And every time a user is signed with that signing key, they get those permissions out of the box. And uh, since this is more templatized, you can do some really cool dynamic stuff with it. So let me show you what that means. I'm gonna say NSC edit signing key. And I'm going to say uh, the signing key is ABMK, which I just copied. Here you'd want to put your signing key. And then I'm going to say role is a chat underscore user. And so I'm giving this signing key a role of chat user. And this is going to change the output when I say NSC describe uh, account. You could see that we now have this scoped signing key with some details. So the role is chat user and all of these other permissions have just not been set. They're the defaults, right? So let's actually set some of these permissions on this signing key and then we can mint some users around it and kind of see how that interaction works. So I'm going to say NSC uh, edit signing key with that signing key. And I'm going to put a new line here and say allow pub. So we want this chat user to be allowed to publish to a certain subject. I'm gonna say chat.post. And this is where it gets interesting, folks. We can use templates to insert dynamic content in here based on users' tags or the user's name, uh, the account tags or name, or even the actual um, public keys. And so here, I'm just going to say tag um, org for the organization. Maybe this is like a Slack type product that we're creating here. Um, and then I'm going to say dot uh, name. So what I'm essentially doing here is I'm saying, I wanna give any user that's that's signed with a signing key, I wanna allow them to publish to chat.post. whatever org they belong to and whatever name they have. And so you can kind of see how we're doing these dynamic permissions. We only have to write them once and now we could sign them with these signing keys and they're very consistent. Um, this, this can apply to a lot of really cool use cases. Uh, maybe you have a use case where you are you have a lot of devices at the edge and it's not very convenient to update permissions to them and remint user jots and you know give it to them and have them reload. Uh, instead, you just want to dynamically update them as you go. Um, th that can be a really good use case. So we anyway we want to allow them to uh, publish uh, on that subject, and we also want to allow them to subscribe to a very similar subject. It's going to be chat .post .uh, tag org. And I'll show you where that org comes in in a little bit, um, dot star. So what we're saying here is a chat user is allowed to post under their name and they're allowed to subscribe to posts from anybody's name um, as long as they're in the same organization. That, that's kind of how we're structuring this subject hierarchy here. Um, lastly, just for good hygiene, um, in case we want to you know, put in request reply at some point, we should probably say allow pub uh, response. And that should be it for our signing key. Let's go ahead and put that in. Cool. So let's inspect this signing key again by doing Nat's uh, describe account or NSC describe account. And you, you could see that we have pub allow with this template and sub allow with this template, which is great. Uh, now that we have this, let's actually start minting some users and playing around with the Nat CLI to see how this applies. So I'm going to say NSC add user Jeremy, and I'm going to sign this with a particular key with the uppercase K flag, and I'm going to say chat user. And then I'm going to say that the tag, I'm going to add a tag to it, the org tag, and I'm gonna say that org is Synadia. And so what we're doing here is saying, create this user with a signing key, give them the org Synadia tag, so the signing key can do its thing with the, with the dynamic permissions, um, but, you'll see some interesting stuff here that if you're familiar with NSC and you've done this user permissioning stuff before, it's gonna feel a little in, like a little weird. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna do the same thing with a user called Liz. So we have Jeremy and we have Liz, um, the same org, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll say NSC describe um, user Jeremy. Let's see what this looks like. So. 
it's allowed to pub allow to chat.post.tag name. Uh, it's allowed to sub to the org like we expected. Um, and so it kind of figured this out, which is good. Here's the weird part is if I look at the JSON output here, it doesn't actually have any pub or sub permissions assigned to it. All of this is inferred from the key that signed it. So this, uh, this issuer here. And so that's, um, this is really cool because what it allows us to do is we can keep this user job the same way. And all we need to do is update the key to send essentially send updates to any of these clients and they don't have to reload. They don't have to reconnect. They don't have to get new user JWTs. Um, so let's kind of see this in action. So um, I'm going to say, uh, let's see, first thing we need to do is we need to take these users and we need to put them in a Nats context somewhere. So I'm going to say Nats context, save Jeremy and look at, I've already done this before. Um, save select NSC code gangs to chat Jeremy. Great. I'm going to do the same thing for Liz, uh, Nats context, save uh, Liz. Great. Okay. So we've put these into our Nats context. And now um, it looks like I've already selected Liz. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to post this Jeremy. So I'm going to say uh, Nats pub um, chat uh, dot post dot Senadia dot Jeremy. So again, I'm engaging with this subject and I can say hello. And I'm going to say context is Jeremy, meaning as the Jeremy user, I'm going to uh, publish into this chat post Senadia Jeremy. And I should be allowed to do that. And it looks like it allows me to do it. Great. Um, so just so we can kind of see how this stuff works uh, in action, I'm also going to say Nats sub uh, chat chat dot post Senadia dot star, and I'm going to say context. Jeremy. Now, what's interesting here is like, what if I wanted to listen to all of these as Jeremy? It's actually going to say permission denied, right? Because he's only allowed to look at Senadia dot star, right? Okay. So he subscribed there and I can also post as myself and it looks like I'm receiving it. So Jeremy said, hello. Now I'm going to try to post as Liz. And again, we're going to have very strict subject permissioning here. So if Liz tries to post as in, into the Jeremy subject here, um, maybe she says, hi, she's going to get a permission denied, which is great. Um, but she can absolutely post as Liz. It's going to show up right here in the chat. So this is kind of an interesting way to like use a, uh, you know, use a signing key to like create a chat service, um, which is really, really cool. Um, but what if we wanted to add another feature? right? Maybe this chat service is really taking off and we have customers that are asking us to support uh, direct messaging now. So now we have to add a DM feature. And if you, if you minted all of your user jots um, and, and they still have sessions and everything like that, and they're still using them, um, we just kind of made the mistake of, uh, of locking down all of those subjects. And now we, you know, if we, if we minted them the regular way, we would have no way of expanding those, the subjects they're allowed to use unless we, um, re-minted the jot, sent it over to them and say, connect with this new user jot. And, and that's, you know, that might not be feasible in a lot of circumstances, but because we used the signing key here, all we need to do is update the signing key and these users, um, the same old users will have new permissions. So let's actually go and try that out. I'm going to say NSC edit signing key. I'm going to go back to my signing key that I had here and I'm going to add a new allow pub for my DM service. So I'm going to say chat dot instead of post, I'm going to say DM and we're going to do the same thing with the tag org. And we will also say, so they can publish to, um, let's see, they can publish to their name and then we need to know who they want to actually publish the DM to. And we can say, you know, in this case they can DM anybody, right? So dot star here. And then um, we also need to put in an allow sub where they can chat dot DM dot uh, for their org. And in this case, they should be able to listen into any DM that was initiated by somebody, but only ones that are targeting them. Right. And so here's kind of how the fun dynamic permissioning works with this. So they can listen in on any DMs directed to them, you know, assuming that the, the first token is the receiver and the second token is the sender. 
Um, uh, so they can listen to anything that's sent to them, um, but they can only publish on things that they should be able to send. So I'm going to submit this. And now, uh, now we can actually start uh, playing with this a little bit more. So I'm going to uh, say, well, let's first describe our user. NSC uh, describe user Jeremy. Um, and you can see that he has new permissions automatically, which is awesome. So here we go. We're going to say Nats sub chat dot dm dot synadia dot uh, anything initiated by Liz to Jeremy. And remember only Jeremy can subscribe to this. So we're going to say context Jeremy. And then lastly, we're going to have Liz publish to that subject. So we'll say Nats pub again, chat dot dm dot synadia dot Liz to Jeremy. And I'm going to say, hey, and I can receive those. So we're, we have these really fine grained permissions here, um, but the, the most awesome part is, you know, NSC describe user Jeremy JSON, he doesn't have any explicit permissions. These are all inferred from the signing key that we created um, and that we can add or remove or update just on the fly. And so this is, uh, I know this is a bit more of an advanced topic, but it's one that, that a lot of our users don't really know too much about. And I think it's something that can be really, really beneficial um, um, especially in the case of either leaf nodes or edge devices or any of that. This all works across um, all of it. And so in just a couple commands, we created this kind of dynamic permission and it doesn't require any updates to the services um, that are using those uh, credentials, which is really neat. So in the next episode, I'm going to iterate on this concept a little more. Um, it, it, this has been requested by a lot of people, but the idea of saying, okay, um, I want to be able to issue uh, JWTs on the fly for people. And we actually, not only do we have a cool solution for it right now, but we have an even cooler solution coming in that server in a, in a future release. And so I, I have a feeling that I'll probably be um, releasing an, a quick update to that video as well. But this is uh, so far um, what we have. Uh, I hope you guys can stay tuned for the next episode because we will have uh, a lot of a lot more cool things to show off. Um, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.